So if all of these are non-zero, so you've got, you've got an x squared, you've got a y squared, you've got a z squared, and then we could complete the square, and so we don't have to worry about the linear terms. They're just going to be shifting the center around. So we might as well just focus on this case. Now, look to the case where a, b, and c all have the same sign. If that's the case, then all the traces are ellipses, and so we have an ellipsoid. Um, but if one of these has an opposite sign, so maybe these two are positive and that one's negative, for example, then you're going to have either a cone or a hyperboloid. The cone is kind of a special or limiting case of the hyperboloid. Let's look at the cone first. This is an example of a cone. We have x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals zero. Now, if, if we look at it when x equals um, zero, we have y squared equals z squared, right? So y equals plus or minus z. So if you look at that trace, that's in the yz plane, because x is zero. So in that yz plane, that's two lines, right? One with a one line with a slope of one, and another line with a slope of negative one. Same thing happens if you look at traces where y equals zero, because if y equals zero, then we have x squared equals z squared, so x equals plus or minus z. So we have in the xz plane then a line with slope one and a line with slope negative one. Whew, that's hard to draw. All my lines are are crossing here, but basically it's a V and we see a V, or not a V, but an X in the um, X Z plane and an X in the Y Z plane. What happens, what are the traces when we set um, Z equal to zero? Well, if we set Z equal to zero, we get X squared plus Y squared equals zero, which is a single point, right? So the only solution to this would be to make um, X and Y zero, because it's impossible for this one to be non-zero and have this one cancel it out because it will be positive as well. So um, there's only a single point there. But we could also look at, well, what happens if z equals 1? Well, if z equals 1, then we have x squared plus y squared equals 1. So up here in the plane where z equals 1, we're seeing a circle that kind of connects up those, those straight sides, right? If z equals negative 1, we get the same thing because um, negative 1 squared is still 1. So x squared plus y squared equals 1. In fact, if you look at the equation, if you think about setting z to be a constant, it's the equation of a circle, right, where the radius is equal to the height. So the radius of the circle is just equal to how high the circle is above the xy plane. We just have these circles getting wider and wider and wider as we go up or down from the origin. So that is a cone. All right. So. Um, that's kind of a special case of a, a more general situation where you might have a constant over on this side that's not zero. For example, if we set this constant uh, to be negative one, let's see what we get. We have uh, um, x squared plus y squared um, minus z squared equals negative one. So let's see, traces, if x is equal to zero, ooh, now we have hyperbola, right? So, um, see, we would probably turn that hyperbola around so that we had positive 1 on the right-hand side. Basically, what I did is multiply both sides by a negative in order to make the right-hand side positive. If you think about that hyperbola, um, here's x, here's y, and here's z. Um, first off, for this hyperbola, it's in the yz plane, right? z can't go too low or else we'll have a negative on the left but a positive on the right. So z has to be at least 1 um, in order for this to work out. So we have hyperbola that's opening up this way and that way. Now every hyperbola has two branches, right? So there's a branch down here that's doing the same thing in the yz plane. If we look at traces where y equals 0, we have a similar situation x squared minus z squared equals negative 1, so z squared minus x squared equals positive 1. This is almost exactly the same thing, only it's in the xz plane. So we've got a hyperbola with one branch opening that way, and another one branch opening back that way. One branch opening, and then another branch opening down, right? So down this way. And finally, if we look at x, if we look at uh, constant values of z, we have x squared plus y squared equals z squared minus 1, so we're going to make z be a constant. First off, notice that if we make z equal to 0, we're not going to have anything. 
So if we set z equal to 0, we're not going to intersect the graph at all because it's impossible for x squared plus y squared, which has to be at least 0, to be a negative number. So we don't see anything. We really won't see anything until z equals 1. When z equals 1, or negative 1, then we get x squared plus y squared equals 0, which is a single point right here where those two um, hyperbolas in the two different planes come together there. And then if we go beyond that, then we start to see something a little bit more interesting. For example, if we set z equal to 2, then we have x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3, so we have a circle of radius root 3. So up here at, at 2, we have a circle of radius root 3. Same thing would happen if you had negative 2, right? Because it's z squared, so it'd still be 4 minus 1 is 3. So we have a matching circle down here. Okay, so this shape, notice that if we cut it in, um, if we cut it in, say, the x-axis or the y-axis, then we see hyperbolas, right? But if we cut it in the z-axis, we see ellipses. So that's why we call this a hyperboloid, because it's mostly hyperbolas. Now, hyperbola, hyperboloids come in, in two cases. This is, this is one case where there are actually two separate pieces, right? There are two sheets to this hyperboloid. So we would call this a hyperboloid of two sheets. Now you can tell the two-sheet case when you start looking at the circles, because in the two-sheet case, um, you'll get the variable, the odd variable over on the other side, and you'll see that you're going to get circles or ellipses when you freeze that variable that had the, the, odds, the opposite sign from the other two. When you freeze that variable, you start to see circles or ellipses, and, you'll, and if it's going to be two sheets, they're going to be values like this, like z equals zero, where you don't see anything at all. By contrast, you can have a hyperboloid of one sheet. Here's an example. Now, when we move x squared plus y squared over, it doesn't matter what choice of z you make, um, you're still going to be able to see some kind of circle or ellipse, no matter what z is. Be that's because when we moved it over with this constant, it made a positive number no matter what choice of z we had. So we're always going to be able to see circles. Now again, it's a hyperbola because in two directions, like if you look at traces in um, looking at traces in the um, yz plane, so cutting it with the plane x equals 0, gives y squared minus z squared equals 1. That's a hyperbola. And cutting it with y equals 0 gives x squared minus z squared. That's also a hyperbola in the xz plane this time. Um, so notice if we look at those, let's see, here's x, y, and z. If we look at those hyperbolas, these ones, these open out, right? So um, this first set, y squared minus z squared equals 1, that opens out along the y-axis this way and that way. And the ones with x here, they open out this way. That's right, negative x-axis back here. So we've got our branches, branch going forward, a branch going back, a branch going to the side along the positive y-axis, and a branch going um, back along the negative y-axis. We have all those branches. And then when we start freezing z at particular values, so if we have z equal to, say, 0, we have x squared plus y squared equals 1 actually a circle here that connects all those up. Um, the bigger we make z, either positive or negative, we get, um, so if we use plus or minus 1, say, we get x squared plus y squared equals 2 either way. So we get a larger ellipse up here at z equals 1. The ellipse is slightly larger so that it can go around all those hyperbolas. Um, also, same thing down here because the, the equation is the same whether z is positive or negative and so on. This shape um, looks more like a nuclear cooling tower. So if you've seen nuclear cooling towers, that shape, that's a hyperboloid of, of one sheet. Now, the hyperboloid of two sheets sort of disappeared for a while. So you had two disconnected pieces versus this one. Um, the, this one, you, um, it doesn't disappear. It goes all the way through. So the easiest way to recognize that is when you have, when you have two when you have two terms, if you have like 
x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals some constant. If you have two terms that have the same sign, move the one that's opposite over. All right, and when you do that, then um, then you can see for different whichever variable got moved over for different um, traces. When you freeze this variable at a constant, you're going to have ellipses. If this number is negative, it's going to there are going to be some regions where there's no possible ellipse. There's no intersection of the trace with the surface. But if k is positive, then no matter where you go, you always have an elliptical trace, and so you know that it never closes up on itself. So in this case, uh, the, the hyperbola of two sheets and the hyperbola of one sheet, it's kind, they're kind of cases that are on either side of the cone. So if you can imagine a cone, remember the cone came to a point, a hyperboloid of two sheets sort of could fit inside the cone because it would end, right, it would break. A hyperboloid of one sheet could go around the outside of the cone. So. Cones and hyperboloids are uh, very closely related. The cone is kind of like the, the central case, and then you can, you can either break it so that it doesn't meet up, or you can widen this so that you can get through this little tunnel here, and you get a hyperboloid of one sheet.